I'm Phil Curry, and uh, I'm somebody who started off my career as a kid being interested in dinosaurs. And, you know, you're, you're doing uh, your dream, you're following your dream. And uh, I was lucky enough to take a position at the University of Alberta. Oh, I mean, uh, I could talk dinosaurs forever. <laughs> in spite of the fact that uh, this is one of the earliest horned dinosaurs known, in terms of public interest, it's probably the most famous of the horned dinosaurs. Source, we still have these mysteries that have not been solved. There are even very obvious things that uh, you would think would be known, such as how many vertebrae are there in the tail? Uh, where does the neck end and then the trunk begin? We have found uh, holes in the bones of Tyrannosaurus rex, and it's assumed that these holes were caused by a Triceratops charging. However, are they absolute proof? No, they're not absolute proof, uh, because there's other reasons you could have these large, very sharp horns, uh, such as, for example, um, using them for display, so that the males can show off to prospective females that might become their mates. If you take these measurements, then you can estimate the weights of these dinosaurs. This one's coming in, it's apparently somewhere between 6 and 10 tons. <laughs> it's a big animal. <laughs> we know that the larger animals become, the longer their lives are, for example, and the fewer children they have. And so, if there's a catastrophic situation, then there's less likely to be survivors at the end of it. With the reduction in biodiversity at the end of the Cretaceous, these animals were much less likely to survive. This, I think, is a good lesson for us because uh, by reducing all the biodiversity in the world today, if anything catastrophic happens, it's going to have a much bigger effect. There really aren't that many skeletons that have been put on display that are real skeletons. When we get a well-preserved specimen of a triceratops, it certainly deserves all your attention.